So let me start uh, my speech today. So I will talk about the impact of modern, you can say, mango cultivation technology in Pakistan. So here is my profile. So I am Mohammed Ibrahim. I'm a associate professor. I did my postdoc and PhD from the China. I'm affiliated uh, with the Department of Plant Pathologies in the Agriculture University, Tandujan. Today, I will cover the agriculture profile of Pakistan and the constraints faced by the agriculture sector after then the mango production in Pakistan and then a brief overview of traditional farming and the lastly the impact of mango modern cultivation technology and then I will conclude my speech. So Pakistan you know is an agriculture you can say country and agriculture is the engine of economic growth of the Pakistan. Pakistan, no doubt, is blessed by the Allah Almighty with the conducive agroecological condition, which favor the production of great variety of the crops, fruits, and many vegetables. Certainly, agriculture play an important role in generating the economic growth of the country. Agriculture sector is an indispensable to the country's economic growth, food security, employment generation at the rural agriculture sector of Pakistan is contributing around 19% to the total GDP, gross domestic products. It engages the employment around 40%. More than 65% of Pakistani populations depend on agriculture sector for its livelihood. They have been drawing several jobs from you can sowing to the harvesting and picking to the packings. While we are comparing Pakistan with the other worlds, we are having a third largest third of the livestock. In cotton, chickpea, and milk, we are the fourth largest producer in the whole world. While in case of uh, day, sugarcane, and okra, Pakistan is the fifth largest producer. Pertaining to the mango, guava, apricot, and chili, Pakistan is the sixth largest producer in the whole world. While regarding the wheat, onion, and we are the eighth largest producer. To bacon and Spanish, Pakistan is the ninth largest producer in the world, while Pakistan is the largest producer. In citrus and cauliflower, we are on 11th number, while in case of millet, we are on 12th numbers in the whole world. Area-wise, Pakistan is considered to be as a, you can say, 36th number largest country of the world. In the fruit productions, uh, we are having a citrus that is the top most important fruit crops of Pakistan followed by the mango, banana, apple and so on. Mango that is believed to be the king fruits in the world and it is the national fruits of the Pakistan as well especially the summer national fruits while we also having you can say winter national fruit that is a goa. We are also having a jeju, banana, date, palm, lemon, and so many other, you can say, fruit crops that are being grown from northern areas to the southern areas in almost five provinces of the Pakistan. Therefore, agriculture sector is considered to be the backbone of the country. However, being a, you can say, backbone, it is, you can say, being affected by the several constraints. Among them, the most importantly, shrinking of arable lands. That is really a big challenge in these days we are facing in Pakistan. You know, so many UK said the fertile lands, cultivable lands are being converted into the, you can say, urban areas into different housing schemes. Even mango orchards are being devoured by the housing, housing scheme and they are converted into the mango trees rather than the mango orchards. Another big challenge that is the climatic change. <clears throat> we know that global warming is bringing a new challenge to the nation's food security. And at present, around 21 million people in the Pakistan are already estimated to be acutely food insecure. 
Pakistani population is forecast for almost triple in next 30 years. That means we will having another 200 million people to feed them by 2050. Another challenge we are facing that is water shortage. Sometimes our farm, farmers, they don't have enough water. Even they have other inputs like maybe the seed and fertilizer, they did, but they are not able to grow because of unavailability of the waters. Rain and floods, that is also you can see happening uh, sometime and creating a huge loss in uh, countries. Like in the recent few months, a heavy rainfall takes place in the many parts of the Pakistan's different survivals. So you can have a look from these glimpses that many you can say <clears throat> cities, many villages, they have been you can say encountered by the heavy rainfalls. You know, the parents, they, they had tried to, you can say, <clears throat> shift their children toward the safe places by using their own resources. That was really, you can say, miserable situation in the last few months in Pakistan. The simultaneously agriculture sector that was also severely impacted, almost all, you can say, cultivated crops in, you can say, those areas completely, you can say, devastated, destroyed. And mango archers, you know, these, these need a several years, almost I would say the more than 15 years to produce, you can say the fruits at its peak level. They have been, you can say, affected by the heavy rains. You can have a look from these pictures. So recently the major practices followed in a major uh, mango archer that is removal of dry trees or dried, you can say the plants. Another challenge is that is the large populations and the labor shift from the rural to the urban areas, I think is almost happening in China as well. So people, they are living in the rural areas. They are not interested to work in the, you can say, rural areas. They are trying to move and they are changing their professions into the urban areas. This is also a big challenge. It means in the future, we will having a lake, we will having a shortage of the labor force in the rural areas. Plant diseases and pests certainly, you can say, is remain a big challenge all the times into our productivity. You know, according to the estimation of United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, around 40 percent, you can say, annual losses caused by the several insect pests, weed, and different diseases. So, if we want to, you can say, increase the agriculture productivity. Therefore, we need the adoption of the new approaches and technology. That's most important. So let's have a look on uh, mango productions in uh, Pakistan. So mango productions, as we know, the mango, botanically known as the Mangifera indica, that's really hold prominent positions because of its strong you can see, production base and domestic demands and exposed potentials in the country. All of these, you can say, contributes to the country's socioeconomic development. Mango is popularly known as a king fruit among all the fruits. As I already mentioned that mango is a national fruit of the Pakistan and the second most important fruit after the citrus being grown, particularly in trauma of area and the production. Pakistani mango, no doubt, are internationally well reputed. They are very famous because of their sweetness, juiciness, nutrition, and a unique flavor. They are really, as you can say, popularly consumed both as a fresh fruits and in processed form, like as jams, pickles, juice, nectars, squash, milkshakes, and so many other products. Pakistani mangoes recognized as a, one of the best of its kinds in the whole world. Pakistan, with the production of around 1,700,000 1, cultivated on 171,000 hectares, made it sixth largest, you can say, mango producer in the whole world compared to the other countries. The mango production in Pakistan is mainly located in two provinces. One is Punjab province and the other one is the Sindh province that accounting around 99% of the total milk production in the whole country. Out of total production, 63% uh, uh, 
contributed by the Punjab province, while rest of the production is contributed by the Sindh province that is located in the southern part of the Pakistan. However, the per, acre, per hectare yields of mango in Pakistan is around 10 ton per hectare that is quite low compared to the developed country, other country of the world. It has seen decline in the production volume, largely due to the outdated farming techniques. Let's have a look uh, on traditional farming. So here is an overview of traditional farming system that is being followed in the Pakistan. So, you know, in traditional farming system, the distance between plant to plants and row to is, row is ranging from 10 meters. And it can accommodate only 40 plants per acre. So look at here, so it's really a wider and it. In addition, the management practices, uh, like maybe the prunings, training, spraying, and some so many other practices, really are quite difficult when mango trees occupy a height of 50 to 60 feet. And it sometimes become 100 feet. Look at this tree. This is around 100 feet long. It's very hard to apply the pesticide application or maybe other, you can say, pruning practice or remove maybe the disease or dried branches. So here is another overview, just the so people, they are, you can say, trying to spray, but the, <clears throat> that is beyond the excess of the spray machines True, you can reach at the top levels. Even inside the, you can say, mango orchards is really very much congested. And while they, you can say, the workers, they are spraying the pesticide inside, they may be the dangerous for their health. Another practice pruning that is really hard, you know, sometimes you can say mango canopy, that you can say become converted in many, you can say dry branches or disease branches that need to be removed. So people, they are trying to remove or by different ways. Look at this fix. So this is, you can say one place. So farmers, they are trying to, you can say, remove unnecessary branches. That's really a challenge, especially in traditional farming. It's a challenge while we are comparing small trees uh, with uh, other, you can say, the big trees. In case of small trees, it's a very easier, while in case of big trees, it needs a lot of labors as well as a lot of, you can say, <clears throat> challenges to face to clean the such kind of orchard. So here are the views of traditional farming system which is followed in the Pakistan. Sanitation, as I mentioned, we need to, you can say, clean the disease or dried branches, as well as remove, you can say, the dried leaves from the canopy of the mango trees that need a lot of labors. Here are the some, you can say, glimpse some views of those practices which are followed <clears throat> by the different farmers, different mango growers in Pakistan. So here is again some clips you can witness. So a huge number of, you can say, dry leaves. And that need you can say, a lot of labor to clean it. This is again another clip. The water, they are you can find to remove the disease and dry leaves around the canopy of the members. So certainly it a labor, you can say intensive activity and uh, need a lot of labors to work such kind of orchards and simultaneously need, uh, you can say, huge cost. So move from the orchards, <clears throat> they are seedling progeny and they take almost 10 to 15 years to give economic returns depend on particular cultivars or variety of the mango and the planting distance followed as well as the cultural practices being applied on such orders. So here is a view of the traditionally you can say farmed from the seedling progeny. This is you can say another views of those orchards. Look at this cliffs. So <clears throat> the tree size and tree canopy that is too big and too high. 
we can also see from this clip the tree size is too big so let's talk about the impact of mango production technology especially the modern mango production technology so after decade of declining harvest mango growers in pakistan are pinning their hopes on a new farming technique that would allow them to increase their fruit quality as well as quantity even up to the sixth time the reasons as i already mentioned that for the low productivity may be the several however biotic factors as well as abiotic factors are also important in addition to that one the conventional mango planting is one of the most important reasons it has been realized that major reasons of the decline is outdated farming practices as well so many you can say farming practices that is you can say not modernized that not you can say depending on the so and this is almost done in the traditional mango farming system modern farming system may increase the yield up to the double even a higher but the most problem the most important problem in pakistan is that in pakistan our farmers they are not fully conversant with the most modern techniques intensive cropping system and the modern you can say harvesting techniques due to which our per hectare yields is adversely affected which limited around 8 to 10 tons per hectare in comparison to the 20 to 25 tons per hectare while we are comparing the western countries with the pakistan really is quite low agriculture experts based on their you can say research findings knowledge and experiences they had pointed out several weaker points however some of the most importance are like extraordinary distance followed between plant to plant and row to rows and less immunity against the take of several diseases as well as infection caused by the several pests simultaneously the lack of adoption of the modern techniques in pakistan as well according to the experts of agriculture in order if we want to increase per hectare yields in the orchard apart from the traditional agriculture practice we have to adopt modern techniques for the production enhancement you know in a european countries by adopting these technology many farmers are planting around 5000 to 9000 trees per acre in order to enhance their food productivity as the number of fruits plants increase certainly the productivity gets boost due to the less height and the fruit season start earlier compared to the traditional farming system and that certainly increase you can say farmer income thrively but how to increase the number of mango plants a number of you can say the mango trees in an orchard that's not a big challenge but we need to you can say transform our traditional orchard into the high density mango or maybe ultra high density mango farming system this is you can say one clip that i took from you can say <clears throat> from internet so this is you can say old traditional system or you can conventional system and this one you can say being converted this is one model here yeah, converted into the ultra high density mango farming system so what is high density mango farming system high density mango farming system is also said to be as a small tree system in pakistan that can really revolutionize the quantum of our mango production high density mango technology is a, one of the improved production technology to achieve the objective like as enhanced productivity of fruit crops as well as yield and quality of the produce so this is you can say in the model so that is you can say followed comparative to the traditional system you know in the low density or traditional farming system we are following 10 into 10 meter especially the between row to row while in case of you can say moderately density mango is squeezed reduced that is 7 into 7 
and that can accommodate around 82 plants, 82 trees per acre, compared to to the 40 that is in conventional farming system. While we are, you can say, in following high density mango system, that may have, you can say, five into five. Geometry can be reference. Five into five, plant to plant and row to row distance. It can accommodate around 160 plants per acre. In case of ultra high density mango, you can see farming system. The geometry can be three into two, or maybe it's swing, or maybe four fields. It can accommodate more than 600 plants per acre. So look at this, you can see table. It's too much compared to the, you can say, the conventional farming. So that's only the 40 plants per acre. So there are several advantages of high density plantation, as well as we can say the small tree system to improve the quality of the fruits. It can reduce the labor cost, resulting in the low cost of the production efficiently, and especially the fertilizer usage, water usage, fungicides, and several other pesticides. It is best in utilization of land and resources, easy for intercultural and plant protections and harvesting mares. We can obtain export quality fruits from the, you can say, high density mango plantations. It's really profitable comparative to the traditional mango cultivation system. Easy to harvest as the tree height is under the control. Good sunlight and air penetration can take place in case of, you can say, small tree system that's impossible, especially in traditional farming, as you had seen one cliffs of the traditional, you can say, grown mango orchard. Better fruit quality as well as quality can be obtained from the high density mango plantations. So here is, you can say, the overview of Australian high density mango orchards. So in this one, they had followed three meters, distance between plant to plants and a six meter distance between row to row. And that accommodate around 500, more than 500 trees per hectare. You know, so in this system, they maintain the height around 4.2 meters of the trees and they and organize the can of tree, the variety R2E2, they obtain 30 tons per hectare. That's really a too much. It's even, you can say, more than they grafted their mangoes with Calasso varieties. And from there, they obtain 50 tons per hectare. Even they obtain more production while they grafted their trees with the cage variety, that was a 70 tons, it's too much. Yeah. And I would say it's impossible while you can say, follow the traditional farming system. So keeping these facts, you know, so in our farm is a one of the, you can say model farm of Sindh Agriculture University, Tundujan. So I just wanna have a brief overview. I don't wanna go in details. So Mali Farms is located beside the Mirpur Khas Dual, you can say, in Terejpe, that is nearby the Sindh Agriculture University Tundro Jams. So this is, you can say, short biography of Mali Farms. And this is, you can say, almost the Mingu Archers. So here is the personas we are working at Mali Farm together. So my staffs, they are working under my, you can say, super VN. So we have almost, you can say 150 acres of total areas and uh, 130 is being occupied by the traditionally found mango, you can say for a while. We are also having high density mango system in six acre and ultra high density mango system in one acre. So this is, you can say one model for the, especially you can say growers of the Sindh province as well as Pakistan. So we are having more than 15 varieties at our farms like Sindhari is one of the most, you can say, important and being, you can say, favored and having export quality. So let's have a look on a high density mango and ultra high density mango farming system that is followed at uh, Malir, you can say, in a mango farm of SAU Tundrojan. 
So this is, you can say, the model which we followed at our, you can say, farm. We followed plant to plant distance that is uh, three meters and six meters. That's almost, you can say, similar, similar to the Australian, you can say, the high density model. So we started planting in 2021, especially in the month of September. And after then, we followed, you can say, modern techniques and planted in seedlings, which we, you can say, obtained from the, you can say, local markets. So here are the, you can say, views, glimpse of, you can say, seedlings, which we did in the high density mango plantation. In the February months, so this is, you can say, the height obtained by the high density. And this is again another practices followed by my other workers. These are the recent picks of my of our farms. This is high density model in which we are, you can say, maintain six meters between plant to plants and between row to row and three meters between plant to plants. And these are the you can say recent picks which we, which we obtained. So here is the overview of the high density mango plants. This is another, you can say, overview of HGM, high density mango plants. We also having, you can say, ultra high density model at our Malay farms in the agriculture Institute on Rujan, in which we maintain the distance between plant to plant two meters, while in case of, you can say, row to row, maintain the three meter distance. Here is overview of, you can say, ultra high density mango plantation. It's still in the earlier stage, need a time, at least two years, to having a production. So these are the recent picks of ultra high density of the mango. So this is these are the you can see some other picks which I you can say obtain from the neighboring you can say growers. So let me conclude uh, my speech. The high density or maybe the small tree system really can revolutionize the quantum of mango production. Mango productions can be increased some five times in the country. As we know, the average yields per acres is around five to eight metric tons from the large tree or maybe the conventional farming system. And an average of 25 to 30 metric tons could be harvested from the same area using the similar tree system or maybe the high, you can say, density mango system. According to the estimates of Sindabad guard boards, and the STA or maybe the HTM is currently being used only in total mango cultivation, especially in France. So we are still forming system and techniques. Old mango orchards can be replaced with new ones, but farmers in Pakistan is reluctant to prune their trees. They are thinking that it would reduce their yields. Probably several you can training sessions needed to raise mean techniques and may you can say further help them. Even we may introduce, you can say demonstration archer, demonstration players for them as they can get know-how and they may be you can say diverted to the modernizations. In addition, and some subsidies needed to, you can say, given to the farmers who wanted to improve the essential machinery.